One of the oldest and most powerful beings in the multiverse, a planeswalker with the power greater than the Gatewatch, he stands on the horizon of Amonkhet. He holds many lifetimes worth of experience, knowledge, and power than any of the modern day walkers could ever fathom. Nicol Bolas, a master of black, blue, and red magic, stands as the most powerful Elder Dragon. In this video, we will be taking a look at the legendary Nicol Bolas. With the onset of Amonkhet in the very near future, what better way to prepare ourselves for the threat than to build ourselves an Elder Dragon Highlander deck centered around the most powerful one. For the uninitiated, the Commander format was originally called the Elder Dragon Highlander format, or EDH. The name came from the creature type of the five original Elder Dragons. We recently gained a new cycle of the Elder Dragon creature type from the Dragons of Tarkir set, but these are a much different breed of dragon. Nevertheless, the EDH format became extremely popular, but because of copyright reasons, once Wizards began to release product for the format, they had to change it to the Commander format. Our build featured today will be very much in the flavor of Bolus's ambition. Taking inspiration from his mind-shattering ability, where his touch alone caused all coherent thought to cease, our deck will aim to remove our opponent's resources. By that, we mean hands. Bolas himself offers a powerful ability just upon dealing damage. The damaged opponent must discard their entire hand. This is a brutal consequence to letting damage get through. And we will be capitalizing upon it because we're that kind of person. In terms of creatures, we don't run too many as most of our oomph will come from our non-creature spells. But with our creatures, we do get a lot of value. For starters, Barb Shocker forces an opponent to cycle their hand each time it deals damage to a player. Take note that in the case of the Shocker, and even with Bolas himself, it does not require that the damage dealt to be combat damage. So, if you would like, I'd recommend Warstorm Surge for some immediate impact of these two creatures' abilities. Jace's Archivist gives another cycle ability for super cheap, but these hand cycle abilities ensure your opponents don't get to hold onto their hands for very long. Going even further, Mind Slicer and Sidroxus Spectre both force opponents to discard. Croesus the Purger is another dragon legend that has an ability kind of similar to our commander, forcing an opponent to discard a bunch of cards on combat damage. With Croesus, it's combat damage, unfortunately. But his evasive flying ability is pretty fun as well, making him pretty hard to block that combat damage. Now we do have a lot of non-creature spells that will force opponents into discarding cards in mass. My personal favorite, and perhaps the most flavorful of the bunch, is Cruel Ultimatum. The Ultimatum cards were all pretty sick, but for Commander, this one is definitely the most potent. Dark Deal forces everyone at the table to cycle their hands. Monomania drops a player down to just one card in their hand. Siphon Mine not only robs each opponent of a card, but it nets you more cards the more players have to discard. Tyrannize forces an opponent into a tight spot, either getting singed for 7 damage or forcing them to discard their entire hand. Then, in another flavor win, Wit's End removes an entire hand from an opponent. Once an opponent has no hand, they're left top decking for the rest of the game, you're gonna get yourself into a great deal of advantage for doing this to them. But why stop there? Let's ensure that they never get to play another card. We run a suite of discard enchantments that will force an opponent to discard far more than they'll ever want to. Bottomless Pit, Necrogen Mists, Oppression, Painful Quandary, all will take cards away from the opponents. And when they do, cards like Megrim and Liliana's Caress will make them regret discarding cards. Oh wait, we forced them to do that. Anyway, moving on, Waste Knot is a ton of advantage in this deck, giving you plenty of value whenever an opponent discards anything. We do run a pair of Planeswalkers in this deck, if you couldn't guess by now, the original Necobolas Planeswalker is one of them. You just can't have a Bolas commander deck and not bring his alternate form with you. And of course his dear friend Liliana of the Veil will bring some additional oppression to your opponents. Now the downside of Necobolas is he does cost 8 mana, and that's a lot of mana to get on the board. We will have to have some means of speeding the process of mana ramp up. This will come in our ramp package. 
The staples of Soul Ring and Mana Crypt for cheap colorless mana are a must have here. The Chromatic Lantern will fix our mana for whichever color we need, so we'll be able to get those three different colors. The three signets will give us two colors from each, which will be great as additional mana sources. And a very flavorful inclusion, the Gem of Becoming will give us one of each of our basic lands. Going into the mana base now, we do have some important things to cover. We're going to need as much mana as we can in the Grixis colors due to Bolus's high cost as well as his upkeep cost. We will want cards like Ancient Tomb, Cabal Coffers, and the Temple of the False God to give us more mana. Command Beacon is definitely recommended to counteract the additional mana you may need to pay should Nicobolas be sent back to the command zone a few times. Croesus Catacombs is a neat take on a Karoo style land, but it lacks in tempo from forcing you to bounce a land, it makes up in being able to produce any color mana right away. Grier Reach Sanitarium offers some card draw and discard effects. The Hall of the Bandit Lord is included to let Nicobolus start swinging as soon as he hits the field. And Rogue's Passage ensures that a creature, like Nicobolus, we need to make contact can do so. Shizo Death Storehouse gives fear, which makes a creature unblockable except by black creatures and artifact creatures. If you give Nicobolus fear, he'll become even harder to block. Of course, your standard assortment of shocks, fetches, and check lands. For fetches though, I only recommend using the ones in your colors as they'll give you the best access to whatever colors you may need at any time. So for this deck in particular, I recommend Polluted Delta, Bloodstained Mire, and Steam Vents. I've included Strip Mine and Ghost Quarter to slow down opponent if necessary, if their commander obviously might cost less than ours. As this deck will have some slow startups. The strategy for this deck is quite simple. You get out Nicobolus as quick as you can and begin chipping away at your opponent's hands. If they have no spells to play, you can play without the fear of response. They'll cycle through their decks a lot faster than they may be able to react to, and as a result they'll be unable to get their footing in the game and likely deck out faster. Meanwhile, you might lose your hand every now and then, but your deck is built in such a way that you can recover and be flexible with what cards you may come into each cycle. I do hope you have enjoyed this EDAH deck tech. If so, feel free to hit that like button to let us know. Perhaps we should cover him again at a later date once we see what cards we get from Amonkhet. Let us know what you think of this deck, and as always, the deck list will be in the description of this video. And with that, I will see you in the next upkeep.